right, so today we're back again for another video. And in this tutorial of VFX Basics, we are going to be making our first one, and that is being fire. Now, fire is something that can be as tricky or as simple as you really want it to be. But in this case, we're going to be making a pretty high quality one uh, out of scratch, and um, we'll see how that goes. So once you get into the studio, go ahead and slap you in a part, set the transparency to 0 0.8, and set the size to 1 comma 1 comma 1. And from here, we just need a little bit more space, and we have our starting point. So from here, we're going to go ahead and put an attachment into that part and a particle effect inside of that attachment. Now we're going to go ahead and get the basic settings down and it's really kind of up to repetition at this point. I've made a lot of particle effects so the settings come pretty quickly. Alright, so from here we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the emissions tab and properties. We're going to set the lifetime to a 1, comma 1.5. Lifetime. Now, whenever you you are doing lifetime, you have to take into account how the transparency would affect that. But we will get that to that in a minute. We're gonna go ahead and set the rate to sixteen. Our rotation is gonna be three sixty comma negative three sixty. So that way, our fire is a little bit more randomized when we insert that particle. Now, rotation speed fifty comma negative fifty. Something light not really super heavy just to add a little bit more complexity to your particle effect. Now, speed, we're going to go ahead and set it to 3. Fire isn't something that's necessarily super fast, but it's also not something that's super slow. You want to have enough uh, edge to it so that way we don't necessarily have something that's going absolutely ballistic, but it's just fast enough to where it makes it look pretty realistic. Our spread angle is going to be 15 comma negative 16. So there we're going to be having a little bit more bump at the top, not so much at the bottom, but it is going to be working out pretty well for us. So now that we got our basic emission traits down for a simple fire, we're going to go ahead and open up our plugin. Now if you guys are wondering what this plugin is called, it's called Zenito Visuals. I'll be leaving it down in the description so that way you can follow along in the video. And it also um, help you out a lot. It's one of the best plugins for VFX that I know. So now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and find a nice fluid fire texture that we want to use. that we're going to go ahead and turn our light emission and light influence completely off and set our brightness to 5. From there we're going to go ahead and give that color a really nice hint of orange so that way it has that fiery kind of look and feel to it. From here we're going to go over to our size and we're going to drag the one that's all the way to the right down and we're going to drag the bottom one a little bit up so that way we have a nice little fadeaway in into our effect now from here we're gonna we're, we're going to duplicate this effect right here so we're gonna go ahead and make two of these and in the next one we're gonna add the spread angle we're gonna make the spread angle 45 negative 45 to give it a nice little fluid feel. Now in the initial one that we made, all you have to do is come down here to the flipbook and go down to flipbook mode and set this to one dot. Now you can see that we have a very nice fiery feel and it seems like our bottom is a little bit too small for our shape so we're going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger so that way we have 
a little bit more of the following effect. From here, we're going to go into this swatch, and we're going to add a point in that second to last column and drag that last one up just a little bit. So that way it kind of smushes off at the end and it looks really, really, really nice. From here, we're going to go ahead and set our transparency. Go ahead and select both of them and make them a linear, just like this. And now we have that nice little pop to the end of it as well. And we have these small little embers coming off. And we didn't even have to change that. We, all we had to do was duplicate it. So now all you have to do is add a pop to the character. So I'm just going to change the name of this real quick. That way I know which one I am working on. So we'll go with this one. Embers. And this one is our. So now we're going to go ahead and duplicate our face again. And we're going to go ahead and slap another particle effect within that face that is very complementary to the initial particle that we had used. Let's see, this one is pretty good too. So now all we have to do is make some tiny changes to this one. So we're going to go ahead and reduce the size make it a bit smaller than that one, just like that. Now, if you look closely, if we turn our light emission up, it gives it that really bright feel. And light emission is something you have to kind of play around with. I typically do not like to have it on unless I'm making something very specific. So, now that we have this in our base and we have that nice little fluid feel, uh, let's go ahead and make this just a bit darker in the image than the one that we made. Just so we can get that nice little darkness kind of swirly feel inside of that fire. Click OK. And there we have it. There is our nice little cut there on the end. Add some weight on this just a little bit. Speed and uh, adjust the speed just a tiny bit so that way it looks like it's going through the entire thing. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and just duplicate. Actually, matter of fact, this will be a lot easier. Let's go ahead and have a fresh slate, and then all we need to do is kind of copy over the settings that we have from our last one to match the color perfectly. effect and we're going to be using a little psychedelic pen for that just have this set up in your size and it's going to look real good all right that's good tighten that up a bit all right so take a minute to kind of look at this uh, size alteration just so you have a pretty clear feel of how this is going to look. Now for our swash, do the same thing. Cut one of these, drag the end up just a little bit. And that's all we need for that. Transparency, set it as a linear transparency. And then from here, all we need to do is for the light time, we'll do it like a 1.5, just so it barely comes out. Maybe it'll set to 0.75, just a little bit of extra light. So from here, we're going to set our speed to that of 8, and our rate to about 25, our rotation 360 comma 360, and we'll take the speed 50, make it a 50, and now go down here into the plug in their static effect and let's find that perfect ember that is nice and simple and we'll come down over here we have our ember and our spread angle is going to be something like 60 or negative 65 and 
nice, simple, very, very easy fire to do. I would take the time to practice around the colors and small alterations to this if you are looking for something a little bit more specific. But something like this is very, very easy to do, and it's something you can generally play around with and have some fun with. So I do recommend doing that. And feel free to add a little bit more depth. I just wanted to keep it nice and simple for you guys. So in our next video, we'll be covering some more advanced things. And we'll definitely be doing some really cool stuff in the next video. So I hope you guys stay tuned in. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.